Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8, familiar scripture starting in verse number 40. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, on the other side of the lake, the crowd welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Is anybody waiting on Jesus? Now you're looking for him. Verse 41 says, Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who had been about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowds. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12, 12 year old kid, 12 year old infirmity. 12 years of constant bleeding and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the cloth, the fringe of the hem of his robe. Immediately, bleeding stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? Everyone denied it. And Peter said, Master, Peter got upset. This whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Hold what you got, homie. Someone deliberately touched me. Oh, there's a touch and then there's a touch in faith. There's worship and there's worship in faith. There's praise and there's praise in faith. They're standing, but they're standing in faith. You can do all that, but is it in faith? Thank you, Holy Ghost, for that revealed revelation. Verse 47 says, when the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fail to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. And our Lord said, daughter, he said to her, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Father, thank you. Father, this is a familiar scripture to many of us. But I think we can continually learn some principles to help us in the season that we're in, spiritually as well as naturally. Speak to your people. Say what you need to say in the time limit that you need to say it so that I can close the book. Don't let me go a second over. Don't let me move from spirit to flesh. Hide me behind your cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the holy God that we serve. I woke up this morning and I began to do my normal studying. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the, uh, the drummer a hand. Let's give Brother Jason a hand. Thank God for Brother Jason and his family. But I woke up this morning. God woke me up this morning. I began to just study and read some things. And I, and I began to see. And I'm just starting to see pastors. I'm careful because I'm a pastor myself. But I'm starting to see pastors. I'm starting to see people. My God, I, I just turn away from the faith. True biblical faith. And it's very discouraging, but I had to remind myself. And I put on that Facebook post the blessing is in remembrance and told the people of God, uh, uh, don't forget what God has done for you and what belongs to you. Uh, and I just begin to just thank God for me and mine. I thank God for this season in my life. My God, coming up on 50 years old in September, if the Lord delay is coming, and I thank God for the season. I thank God for this season, all these years. I was talking to one of my childhood friends, and I won't call his name, in prison. And I asked him uh, when me and my secretary was typing a reference letter for him. I said, man of God, because I lost count. I said, how long you been locked up? He said, Pastor Jew, I've been locked up 30 years. If I called his name, many of you know him, but I'm going to be careful because he won't be talking to me no way, so. <laughs> uh -huh. 
And so he asked me how long. I said, I got saved April 30th of 1995. I said, about 23 years. He said, no, 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 no. I said, what? He said, you're 24 and a half from 85. Now, I mean, 95 to present. You're 24 and a half. He said, you're cutting yourself short. Because I don't usually keep up count, keep count on how many years it's been, but it's going on 25 years that I have been anchored. That I have not allowed my faith to deteriorate. And I have allowed people to contaminate, discourage me, frustrate me. I have not allowed life, trials, tribulations, circumstances, lied on, talked about, none of that stuff that caused me to abandon my Savior. People, I'm pastoral you today, so don't look for all nothing else. I'm following God. People are leaving God by the hundreds. Leaving the faith. I looked at a pastor online saying he's no longer a, multi, a mega church identifying himself as a Christian. He's going through a divorce. There was some sexual stuff that happened inside of his church. And so he's coming up under some pressure. And he didn't go into all the details, but he's up under some pressure. Going through a divorce. We tend to have those problems. Accusation of sexual sin has happened inside the congregation, according to the article. And, and then, he, then he began to apologize about some of the books that he has put out. And he began to take, that, take back some major quotes that's biblical. And he said, I no longer believe that, so I need to apologize. And so some of his books he has said, I'm discontinuing. I want him to take them down because he no longer believes in absolute truth. Then he said he had to apologize to the, what is that, the LB, what is that? Community. Because he took a strong biblical stance against that type of spirit. That's all it is. We all got them. Cigarette spirit, cocaine spirit, game banging spirit, angry spirit. It just ain't nothing but a spirit. Everything is a spirit. But then he said he apologized for whatever he may have said. And now he don't believe in man and woman. Marriage. I will not call his name. I'm not trying to put him down. I'm telling you where the Spirit of God is taking me. I, as a true shepherd, grieve for the 10,000 people that he has pastored all those years. That is confused because the shepherd or the pastor that they were submitted to has shifted, not for the good. Let me let you know my stance, and I'm on record. I do not dislike nor hate any man or woman that's struggling with their identity. I have a personal flesh and blood brother that is struggling with his identity. And I love him with all my heart. I want you to know, and I'm on record, anybody that is struggling with that type of spirit, you are welcome to come to 205 because I'm not going to change you. God's going to change you. I just understand that I cannot. Me and my wife have caught a lot of things early on, but we understand, and she always remind me, I can't change nobody. I can't make you do nothing. But I know one thing. If you go through those classes right there, I guarantee you, by the time you get to nine months later, you're going to have a little talk with Jesus. And you're going to begin to think about something different. So I ain't got nothing to do, my God, but present the vision and let the word of God change you. And so you are welcome. Because I know many of you know I take a hard stance about order, structure, holiness, sanctification, and I still do. 
and I will not back up. But I will not close the door on people that need Jesus. This church will always be a vehicle and these doors will be open to the people out here that's hurting and lost and suffering. There's many, there are many degrees of sin. We all got it. But me making that statement was the man of God shifted and he shifted to me according to this, the wrong way. So I want you to stay anchored because as I talked to church this past Wednesday that uh, everything that you and I is experiencing right now, is anybody experiencing some form of trial? Some form of pain? You need some form of healing? You need some form of financial release? You need some of your children to come back to the... Okay, so everybody can identify <laughs> my students, boy, I tell you. <laughs> this ain't all of them. Next month is going to be the whole row, a whole thing of them. Yeah, you're saying. But, any, but, 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 but we can all identify with needing something from God, right? So if we can all identify that we all are in the same place, just different situations, just different needs, but we all in the same place. We all struggle with the same things. Uh, that none, one thing that we all struggle with is called S-I-N. But I needed y'all to understand this right here. Everything that I just decreed, I talked about, I mentioned, those are our attacks that the enemy will use, our things, our vehicles that the enemy will use to rob you of your faith. Every attack that the enemy tries to use is after your faith because whoever get the faith, like whoever get the mind, get the life. If you can start turning backwards on your faith, you are in trouble. When you still longer, you when you start getting to the point where you're questioning God, Christianity, the existence of God, did Jesus go in the flesh? I say, he, he got you. Talk to God, ask questions, inquire. But when you do that, make sure you talk and ask questions to the right people. See, you have what. You have communicate, communi communi uh, communicated, thank you, Holy Ghost, knowledge. Like I'm doing, I'm communicating. Then you have revealed knowledge. That's when it comes straight from the fire. Notice I said fire, because he is a consuming fire. <laughs> uh, he ain't Santa Claus, he's a fire. That's why you got to be careful how you're approaching, because fire burns up stuff. And so, my God, make sure that the information that you're getting, whenever you're researching, that is communicated from, is revealed from the fire, not from contamination. Stay anchored. Refocus, recharge yourself. I would hate to see, and I have experienced exactly what I'm talking about, many shipwreck and abort the process. I'm talking about leave faith in general. When I see them, I'm, hey, Pastor, I see it all the time. Minister Oliver always talk about this. He sees so many people within the community that has walked away from God. Is that you this morning? You're so oppressed, so heavy, to where you're ready to quit. But you got to ask yourself like Jesus asked the disciples. To whom and what, Brian? Am I going to go back to? What you going to go back to? Because the very thing that we just raised our hand about is the reason why you're sitting here today. What you going to go back to? Stay encouraged. This right here is key to anchored faith. On your face in prayer is key to outlasting the storms. You will have, and I will have storms, but is your faith built to outlast the storms that you come, that's coming upon you? Is your faith built to outlast, ooh, Tosh, the storms? I just said that you've been through that's coming your way because this Bible decrees that even so, it's going to get worse, 
even the elect will be fooled, will shipwreck, will turn away. Do you have faith that without last, the storms that's coming? Don't shift on God because God did not shift on you. Let's give Jesus a hand. I have always enjoyed the underdog story. I was filming in the barbershop at Chuck's over there on Pine and Eddie Mayhem, my childhood friend, said me and him used to always compete because we both were short in stature. And we had the underdog complex. I said, you boy, you confirmed my message. They seem to identify, talking about underdog stories, they seem to identify with some parts of my life. I was telling him that I was about this tall once upon a time and I had a long curl. But I had a big heart and I still got it. But I was an underdog. When I asked my wife to be my girlfriend, I was at a house party in Sacramento, California. And y'all see she's tall and I'm short. And I was sitting on top of a, I think it's a, was it a dryer? Washing machine, a dryer. <laughs> sitting on top of it, Pastor. She was standing in between me. Now we face to face. <laughs> That'll preach right there, face to face. <laughs> and I asked her to be my girlfriend. That was August 8th, 1987. 87. Amen. Tomorrow we get the privilege to celebrate 19 years of marriage. Amen. Thank you. And I can tell you that the enemy has tried everything since I accepted this mantle to pastor. He's tried everything he could and could and throw it at us to try to get us to tap out and divorce. But we have withstood by the grace of God and, hadn't, and have gotten better, I have, with understanding that this is a nugget for my married men, that what she need at 50, she didn't need at 20. Relationships always evolve. Don't try to love on your husband or love on your wife the way you did at 18, 20. 21, you got to constantly adjust and adapt. And then you can't love someone from broken places. That's why you got to get healed. If you're anything like me, you probably have been the underdog before. Have anybody ever been the underdog? Come on, y'all raise your hands. Talk to me. We finna get going. I ain't got nothing but a few minutes. My God, uh, I know I'm talking to somebody here today who seems, my God, who seems some humiliation. Anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, have been considered the outcast, uh, has been treated like the black sheep. Many of us have been kicked down, pushed down, talked down, looked down, knocked down, torn down, come on somebody, thrown down, walked down and pulled down, brought down, and even held down. Am I talking to anybody so far? Being the underdog isn't fun. In our text, this woman, my God, has an ordeal she could not handle herself. She teaches us through her life how even when we are down, when life seems to be dealing us, have dealt us a bad hand, there's hope. And with Jesus, we can overcome the issues of life. I just told y'all that. Enemy has thrown everything he could and would throw more to try to get me and my wife to divorce after 32 years of togetherness and 19 of marriage. So I think that I'm qualified to tell some of y'all, as well as her, how to outlast the storms of marriage problems. Because as we teach, Dr. Miles told us, you don't have marriage problems. You got two people that got problems in the marriage. <laughs> Fix the people, because the marriage is not broke. 
Somebody need to post that. <laughs> and tag Dr. Miles Monroe. Because that's where I got it from. So I want to talk about this woman that we all can identify with, but I want us to understand something. I'm just going to take my time and, and, just, lay, and just talk about one point, and I'm going to get out of here because I got to come. And I want to encourage many of you can to come to Real Rogers, uh, Real Rogers United Methodist Church. Uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, and if you can't make it, tell somebody, and come on out and support your pastor. Uh, but she teaches us that when we reach for Jesus, somebody say reach. When you reach for Jesus, he can uh, resolve our issues. So I'm going to title this sermon because I know this going to y'all going like, to be mad at me because we didn't let time get away. And, and I done went somewhere that I probably wasn't supposed to go, but I don't know. Come on, somebody. But I'm going to title this sermon, uh, Shift and Then Push. Come on, somebody. Who am I got? Who am I got? Because some of y'all need to shift and then you got to push. Because you're in a cold blooded situation, my God, but you're shifting has everything to do with a paradigm shift. See, some of y'all need to shift in your mind. I was in the gym and I posted that and I said, oh, that'll preach right there and y'all went crazy. Come on, somebody. So, again, shift. Think about it. I'm not even trying to get going. Come on, somebody. Think about shift. Don't even ask to push to it. Shift. What needs to shift? Shift. Oh my God, shift. What's on top of your shift? What you can't defeat, shift. What's vecting your shift? What's troubling your shift? What's frustrating your shift? Right here. Shift in your mind. Paradigm shift. And then after you shift, it's one thing to shift, it's another thing to push after you shift. This woman of God had to do just that. She had to shift and she had to push. She had to go against all odds. So put point number one on the screen. She had a personal problem like many of us got today. That's all I'm going to deal with. Because we can identify with the woman with the issue of blood. I'm not talking about her crawling either. I'm talking about suffering internally and we don't want nobody to know. Dressing it up, suiting it up, whatever you want to put on it. And we don't want nobody to know. According to verse 41 and 42, Jesus was already engaged, oh my God, in conversation with someone else. Talking about Jairus' father. I mean, talking about Jairus. My God. This, but, but this woman was still able to be healed. Mm -hmm. We should be encouraged by this because it suggests to each one of us mm -hmm, that Jesus can also and always be reached. Even though he's carrying on a conversation with somebody else, his focus, my God, was to go, my God, and heal Jairus' daughter, so he's on his way. He wasn't even thinking about the woman with the issue of blood. God is on his way. He, you ain't even came across his mind yet. But if you reach for him, oh, oh my God, see, see, you thank God and forgot about you, but you ain't reached. So you got to reach, and you reach not by this. You reach by faith. Oh, if I had time. I'm, not, I'm trying to, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Christ can be reached. He ain't never too busy. He ain't busy. He was on his way, carrying on, minding his own business. Wasn't thinking about this woman with the issue of blood, but trust me, he's all knowing. He, she knew she, he was, she was coming. He knew it. But he was carrying on, showing you that, my God, no matter what he's doing, he got you. See, you got to get some revelation. See what I say? Quit taking stuff in faith. God sees you. God know where you at. God know what you got going on. He knew this woman was coming. He knew what he was going to do when he said, when Mar 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 Mary said, if you would have came, Lazarus, your friend, would be alive. And the Bible says that Jesus stayed an extra two days because he already knew, Minister Larry, that I got the power to heal, to raise back from death to life. So the very things that's troubling you ain't troubling God because he got all power. He know when it's time to say, peace be still. He know when it's time to say, healing manifest. He know when it's time to say, open the heavens and drop them a show enough blessing. Come on, God. He's in control. He's sovereign of all things at all times and everywhere. So he's carrying on his business. On his way to do a miracle, here comes somebody that had faith to receive a miracle. Do you got faith to receive what you're asking for? Oh, real faith is going to be tested faith. That's Minister Lanny. 
Some of y'all, my God, it's painful. I didn't walk through that season. I'm getting on the other side of it. Amen. But real faith is going to be tested faith. Yes. Ask yourself, another minister letting you quote, how bad do you really want it? Do you got anchored faith? Do you got longevity faith? Do you got patient faith? <laughs> to receive what you need God to do in your life. Write this down. Sometimes God says, wait and trust a little longer. Don't you know that God could have healed this woman way before 12 years? 12 also represents government. God set the church up from, from the 12 tribes, government. 12 patriarchs, government. Come on. But sometimes God got to extend things, even though you're crying, even though you're ready. But he said he, they need to wait a little longer. They need to trust a little longer. See, because God is sovereign. So he know, my God, that this is an opportunity for him to teach and train you how to trust. He's also building and anchoring your faith. Because you can't say you got faith in God and you not trust him. Faith and trust go hand in hand. You can't trust, have faith in nobody that you don't trust. Oh my God, your life wouldn't have transformed even though you've been knowing since I was seven years old if you didn't trust the God in me. You saw past the flesh juju that you watched go up to a man, my God, and saw the spiritual man, and that's why your life is what it is today. So it had to be a level of trust. Ask yourself, where's my trust at? Because remember the Bible says that the only thing, Brother Barry, that moves God is faith. So you can worship, you can shout, you can read, you can do all that external stuff. You can go through all the religious ceremonies, all the religious activity, activity. God says, she ain't got no faith. You come to 12 o'clock prayer, by the way, we got noon prayer at 12 o'clock. We'll have it tomorrow if the Lord delay is coming. We got Wednesday night Bible study at 6 o'clock prayer at, on Wednesdays and also Bible study on Sunday for those that didn't know. Yes, Lord. But you can do all those things and come to all those things, but do you got faith? The woman got her healing because she had faith. God will extend some things because I've taught y'all sometimes he got to put your life on display. Somebody need your story. When you take the office of, at this level, our marriage is on display. But many of those, my God, know that we have taken the licking and we still Clicking, not ticking, clicking. I can't get nobody to see how culture y'all slipping right there. Not and so sometimes, my God, my God, God will put you on display because somebody needs your story. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm still with the sermon. I'll trust me. Somebody needs your story. Somebody need, look at your name and say, I need your story. Okay. And so, my God, for the right people, because the Bible says, Minister Hunters, my God, that God waited an extra two days before he went to the tomb to raise Lazarus. Why did he wait? He could have just sung his word because he had to wait till the right people get there. People had to fly in from Delta, they had to book flights to get hotel arrangements. Come on, somebody. They had to get to make sure they got the chariots and the right horses and they need to make sure they got three enough chariots. Come on, somebody. We're going. So, so, because the right people were there. God is waiting for the right people to get to your life. So you got to suffer a little bit. You got to tarry a little bit. Because <laughs> the right people that need that miracle, you get what to do for you, ain't there yet. Because remember, God ain't on your time. It ain't 1245 in Gavin, I promise you. So, so the right people, just stay with me now, catch the revelation. The right people ain't got to you yet. The right people ain't seen you yet. See, because everybody need a witness. See, see the, the God's going to bring somebody in your life to point you out. Eddie Miller, I can't get nobody said nothing. Told the governor, the governor said, yes, I am. Come on. You need somebody to point you out. And God is waiting to get the right people in your life that has the power, my God, to point you out. Jesus needed John the Baptist to baptize him before he could even start his natural ministry. Y'all missed it. Jesus had to have Tracy, John the Baptist, baptize him before he can even start his public ministry. Yeah. John tried to deter. 
Jesus said, this must happen. I can't move forward until this happen. See, there's certain things you have to go through. And there's certain people you have to connect with before God can move you to another season. I talked to foundation class. You got to transition out of one and transition into another one. It ain't going to always be summer. It ain't going to always be fall. It ain't going to always be winter. Come on, somebody. And so you need somebody to point you out. But here I go. God is extending some of y'all, some of us situations because he's trying to build our trust. What makes, my God, this woman's healing unique is that uh, Jesus was able, boy, God is so good, to heal this woman without ever touching her. Some of y'all think that I got to be up front, all in passing in faith, so I can get a healing. God was able to heal this woman and he never touched her. That's your faith. Faith can get you healed way back there. You can be over there at a the hotel, strung out, and faith can. I took Jakar in April to the exact apartment in Vernon Manor. I don't know what Bradford Square, whatever it is now. Vernon Manor. It's Vernon Manor to me. We changed it from Vernon Manor to Blood Manor. I can't. I took them to the very place, the very house, apartment that I became a crack cocaine addict in. And now that I think about it, it was, <laughs> I'm still in the spirit, but I gotta say this. It had a B sign right there. It did. B, apartment B. I took them to the very place where I became a crack cocaine addict on so my documentary we putting together. The very place. I had moments, they'll tell you, where I had to oh, hold back different memories. And it's amazing, woman of God, I'm still with my sermon, I'm all, that I had all these memories of good times to the very places that I took them to. Oh, no, I remember when I was a kid and stuff and all those type of stuff, and the apartments and different neighborhoods, the, the Cheyenne Park now, John Stokes Park and all that. It's amazing how my life, when I was younger, had good memories. But when I chose to become a hootlum, because that's what it was, a hootlum, ain't nothing cool about that. When I chose to become a hootlum, mm -hmm. the very places that I had beautiful memories, ended up having, I ended up having painful oh, memories. Same place, yeah. different time. Yeah. Beautiful mem memories, younger. When I got older, bad memories. In the same place that I had beautiful memories. Oh, Who is God talking to in this church? Mm, mm, mm. So, so, y'all can tell I'm trying to restrain, right? Yeah. But I'm flowing and I'm still speaking. So watch this. God never, ever touched her. Some of the things that you're wanting and waiting for, God said, you could have been and had it. Watch this. Title was shift and push. That right there was already yours. That been yours. You've been praying about something three years and you could have had it three years ago. The reason why you don't got it and the reason why it ain't manifested because you didn't receive it in faith. Context to the, t the story is 12 years, 12 of his government, he stretched out her healing. He could have healed her immediately. Come on, somebody. But he waited. He could have healed Elijah with a minute. He didn't have to go to the tomb. He could have just say the sent, 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 sent his word. And Elijah would have came forth, my God. But God is strategic. He's a master chess player, yes. my God. And he's waiting for the right people to get in your life. And he's also waiting, waiting for you to clip the wrong people out of your life. Because there's certain, boy, look at it, y'all like it. There's certain things that God will not do. Because he know if he give it to you with this circle, it's going to rob you of it. That's why you cannot be afraid to obey God when he say, shift. You and I, I and you don't understand it. When God dropped it in my spirit to shift from 34, 34, many people left the church because they didn't think I knew what God, I didn't think I was doing what God wanted me to do. Last time I checked, look around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't no bills behind. Everything is paid, giving God the glory. But God, and certain things God cannot do. Y'all need to catch this because you got the wrong people in your life. 
When you shift him out, then he'll do what he needs to do in your life. Did y'all catch that? That's not, that's just, so you got to begin to evaluate your circle. Who and what do you spend your most time with? Is it something that you should have already had, but you don't have it now? Because you've been, you're not doing it, or receiving, or praying, or standing in faith? See, a lot of us got to shift our belief system when it comes to how we handle the eternal. A lot of us try to handle, my God, the eternal, my God, my God, from fleshly carnal methods that man is implemented in the church. You cannot principle, as the Bible says, old and new, you cannot approach a holy God, spiritual, any kind of way. We got to get out of the habit of coming to church and offering God any kind of worship, any kind of praise, any kind of seed. God don't have to whoosh, book a hey guy, he blew it away. What they brought, the Bible said he blew it away. And they could not understand why they wasn't prospering. He said, because you're too busy concerned about your life. And you neglected my temple. You worried about your home. You worried about your cars. You worried about everything, but you ain't concerned about nothing concerning mine. And so God said he blew it home. I mean, he said all the wages, wages, wages. You brought home, your pockets had, your pants had holes in them. Why do you think we ain't always got enough? Three jobs, and you ain't no farther along. Woe out. Can't spend no time spiritually because you woe out. But you know Father. See, we have to correct the problems in order to get the solution. You can't go get three jobs and you ain't dealt with the spirit of greed and lust. See what I'm saying? We're talking about Shift. There's a lot of weight on top of us right now that we should not be carrying. Because that flesh is eating. And now we're in situations that has us bent over like the woman with the issue of blood. I'm still with the sermon. Life, our choices, has bent us over. What is it that you could have received, but you ain't got it because, or haven't received it because you, you didn't receive it in faith? I'm going to say loud right there. Is it something that's left on the table that shouldn't be on the table if you would have just received it, I believed it by faith? Believe for it by faith? Say loud, think, 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 think. What's left on the table that shouldn't be on the table? Remember, this woman got a healing from the God without him ever touching her. She reached for him physically and spiritually. Her position in the naturally was this. Reaching. Spiritually, faith. She was pointing horizontal towards the bottom of his cloak. In the natural, she was at the bottom. In the spiritual, she was vertical. What's your position? Because you could be reaching naturally and your faith is horizontal. I'm redundant. The only thing that God responds to is faith. Trust and faith. Kiss one another. Are y'all listening to me? Okay. In her desperation, thank you, Holy Ghost. God is so strategic. In her desperation, she displays considerable faith by risking the consequences of breaking the sacred rule and willfully coming into contact with other people. 
I'm closing with this right here. When desperation meets faith. Ooh, boy, I'm trying. Are you, when des, when des, I got a squat on this. When desperation and faith meet, desperation and faith collide, des, desperation and faith come together. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. So sometimes you got to look like a fool. So you got to get out of your front yard and just squat. And they're going to think you're playing football with your kids with this, uh, uh. Now you're in a desperate situation. I need a healing. I need a financial breakthrough. I need my kids to come up, whatever it is. And now do I ask yourself, do I got faith? And you you symbolically in the natural, my God, working out what you want to see manifest in the spiritual. Because before you see it naturally, it got to produce spiritually. I can't get nobody. I'm heavy. I'm heavy. You want stuff to manifest naturally, but you ain't got to release spiritually. So before your healing take place naturally, it got to first take place spiritually. Your deliverance got to take place spiritually. You got to go get that. Give me what belongs to me. Look at your neighbor and say, give me what belongs to me. You got to go get your deliverance. You know why? Because when Jesus bowed his head and said it is finished, all you got to do now is go vertical and pour down everything you need in the natural. But it takes faith. You can do all this outward murder. That don't mean nothing to God and show don't terrify the devil. You got to pull yourself down by faith. The church is lost. It's faith. Our faith is anchored and pointed towards everything that's shaky. That's why people are leaving the church after that. That's why pastors are turning away because it's built on numbers. Intoxicated off of the growth. Intoxicated off of, the, off of the, all the, the finest. All the stuff. The church is sick all around the nation. God, my heart, God. Sooner or later, Do you got enough desperation mixed with faith to see it turn? Do you got enough desperation mixed with faith to see it turn? Real faith will keep you anchored. Trials may come. Mm. Situation may happen. Mm. Kids may trip. Mm. Husband may go crazy. Mm. Dog may run off. Mm. Financial problems. Mm. Physical sickness. Mm. Heartache. Mm. Disappointment. Mm. Lied on. Mm. Talked about. Mm. All these. Uh, uh, uh. But if you notice, I ain't never moved. You ain't anchored when them situations start. When you start going through stuff and you didn't drift it, you didn't remove yourself out of position. God says, stay there, and then he allowed trials. He allowed buffering. He allowed situation. He allowed circumstance. He allowed financial pressure, my God, to come to meet you right there because all that comes to develop you. Remember, he protects you like I taught you with you, so he told you to be right there. But you and I, I and you have let trials, tribulations move our faith, and we didn't shift it. We're trying to get God to bless us over her. God said, I told you to stay right here. And the very thing I allowed to come to you right here was preparing you to go up here. But you're out of position. When you and I start compromising and thinking it's okay to live, do anything as professing Christians, we're in trouble. When you look at the church, that's you and I. Everywhere, we're in trouble. A lot of people, the platform has become entertainment. The great David Jeremiah said pastors are so fearful of any controversy. They just let anything go on in the church. No pastors want to correct or deal with anything. So all kind of stuff is filtering through the church around the nation. Because the people, Minister Tina, up here has become, 
has become contaminated by the world I've turned. And so we are now, we're not soul driven, we are people driven. We want people in the church, but we won't say nothing to anchor their faith. Because to anchor somebody's faith in a build a tree, an oak tree of righteousness, minister, you got to say things that makes us uncomfortable. You got to challenge people to stay anchored. You got to correct people when they need to be corrected. You got to encourage people along the way. And people won't do it because they're worried about them leaving out the building. My baby said what God calls for, he's going to provide for. And he have always provided from the day we started this church, April the 13th, April the 7th, 2013, God has always provided. There ain't never been no lack giving God the glory in going off of Christ church. So, I stayed away from the sermon to respect the time. I had a question that was asked to me in foundation. Pastor, how do you know I win on them lines? And she's watching me now. Because I'm actually demonstrating and showing her the answer to the question that she asked me as her pastor. How and do you know, or when do you know, when someone is no longer operating up under the anointing and they just in gifts? I said, for me, because I can't speak about nobody else. When I get to the point where my mind is not sharp, on the points or on the sermon, or when the people have responded and I'm watching the pulse of the people. Many times I've got down here, especially at the old church, and was in a full-fledged preach. And the Spirit of God said, stop. And I stopped. Many times I went right back up to the pulpit and did just what you've seen me do. Because when God speaks and when God is in control, when he say what he need to say, close the book. I know by the spirit that God has spoken enough and said enough without me even getting into the text that it's some people in here right now. They got some people that's interfering with their healing, interfering with their promotion, Keeping them way down, interfering with their healthiness, connected to people that's constantly speaking negativity in your life instead of positivity in your life. There's some people in here that don't know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. There are also some people in here that has tasted the goodness of the Lord but has walked away from God. God is now in a position spiritually with his presence to speak. So with every head bow. The books is closed, destiny. God has spoken. If you don't know, cease the movement other than the musicians. This is not a time to make an exit. You will disrupt the presence. You will distract. Go online, look at the sermon called Death by Distraction. The enemy gets in the atmospheres and environments to distract the people from receiving what they need from the Lord. So remain, remain and hold your posture for a minute, please. If you are here and it's time for a shift from the flesh to the spirit realm and you know today that if I die, I'm not ready and I know I'm not ready and I'm going to keep it on the dollar, I can't change myself. It's going to take God and you're tired. You're tired of your living condition. You're tired of your mental condition. You're tired of your spiritual condition. You're tired of your physical condition. You just tired like I was when I got on my knees inside that six by nine prison cell. And you're tired. I want to tell you this now to take some pressure up off of you. You can't change you. I didn't change me. God did. And so if you're thinking that you got to change and be at a certain place before you can change, you're deceived. And the greatest deception is self-deception. 